Hello and welcome back to the Heartmore podcast. My name is Stacey and I am totally blanking because I haven't done this for a while. I live in the UK, in the southwest of the UK, um, with my husband and three daughters. Um, and yeah, so welcome back if you're a um, old time you know, viewer, subscriber, and welcome if you're new. Um, I This is mainly a knitting or crochet podcast and talk about my sort of, you know, finished objects, works in progress, the standard sort of, you know, format. Um, and I'm a little rusty because um, it's been a good, when was I, did I last do it? May? It's good, been a good three months since I last did one, so I'm a little rusty. Um, so you have to excuse me. Uh, there could be a bit of editing in and out where I'm like going, um, no idea what to say. Um, how are you? How have you been? Um, it's been a really hot summer here in the UK. Um, I do not like the heat. Um, I'm not a hot person. I like cozying up in autumn and winter with um, scarves and blankets and hats and jumpers and anything else. Um, and I, yeah, I'm definitely not a, um, a summer person, so the heat hasn't been good to me. Um, but I have still found some time to do some knitting. Um, and yeah, because I'll, I'll, we live in a like a Victorian style house, and our living room is north facing, so it stays quite cool because these buildings were designed to, well, because they're you know big brick buildings with high ceilings, the heat sort of rises and disappears up there so downstairs here in the living room in the north facing part of the house um it's really quite cool so i spent a large part of my time in here <laughs> um doing some knitting and uh yeah watching it's been a big summer of sport on on television so watching a lot of sports so that's sort of really been what i've been up to um work has been very busy so when I come home from work, I mean, I do only work five hours a day, so it's not, you know, horrendously strenuous. Um, but it's, you know, it, it, when you come home, you don't always leave it behind you. You kind of think about what you're doing the next day and what you've got to do next week. And and I don't normally work over the holidays, but I've had to go in and do some work because we just, there's just so much to do. Um, so I haven't sort of felt like I've wanted to come and, and knit every evening. Sometimes I just read a book. Um, and finding the time to podcast has been, you know, quite difficult. So um, I will I apologise for the state of my hair. Um, yes, I straightened it yesterday morning, washed it, straightened it and went out for the day with my husband, which I'll talk more about at the end. Um, but we, were, we had a lovely day planned and it rained all day and my hair just ended up in this giant puff ball. Um, so yeah, that's <laughs> why it looks a little bit fly away and a little bit messy. Not that you mind in the slightest, I'm sure. Um, you can, so yeah, I'm, this is the Heartmore podcast. So you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Heartmore as well. Um, if you ever want to ask a question or get in touch for any reason, you can do that on Instagram or leave me a comment below this video. I do go on Ravelry, but only really to look for look for new projects or update my project pages. And I do, I do, I do do a project page for every um, everything that I do, but I don't always put loads of information on there. But I do a project page for every everything that I knit generally. Um, so I have a book today with stuff written down so that I'm not going nah, 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 all the time um, and getting everything wrong and obviously it's been sort of a few months so I do have a few finished objects um, to show you. Um, so <laughs> shall we just get started? Let's get into finished objects. I'm going to find, oh, do you know I wrote these notes on the 5th of August because I think I was planning to podcast a bit earlier. Um, so some things might have changed since then because I have finished something else. I have finished um, another project that is currently a whip in my 
in my notebook. So, okay. So I finished the, um, oh, I don't have it here. Hmm. Um, I was working on, I'm just looking at my notes. I was working on the petite souffle. Um, so I did a test knit for Laura of um, Penrose, what's she called, Penrose Knits. Um, and it was the petite souffle. I'll put a picture up in here of the finished object. Um, but it was a really lovely test knit. Um, I used um, pattern was so clear, really well written. Um, it's the first time I've ever knitted one of Laura's patterns, um, which was nice. I used, uh, for the main body, I used Woolly Knit, um, what was it? It's a Woolly Knit 100% British wool four ply in a cone. I held that double um, and the colour was, um, I don't know what the colour is because it didn't actually say, but it's like this um, purpley blue oily colour. It was really, it comes out, it looks like a purple, but if you look close, you know, like when sort of oil falls on water in, in, and it looks really, really like beautiful. It kind of looks like that. So it's a really pretty colour. Um, and the ruffle, so the, the, the frilly ruffle around the chest, um, that was using one strand of the four ply and one strand of another four ply by Beehive Yarns. So a nice bright pink and a purple together to give it sort of that mild effect um, and add just a pop of colour, which my daughter wanted. Um, I knitted it, I knitted the age 9 to 10, because um, my daughter just turned 9, so I wanted something that would last her for at least a year before she grows out of it. Um, and I used a 4.5mm needle, that's what I got gauge on. Um, and yeah, it was a really quick, cute little knit. Um, I'd never done a folded, it's got a folded hem at the bottom. I'd never done one of those before, so that was sort of a new technique to me. Um, and yeah, so... That was my first finished object. I mean, it was nearly finished last time, but it, it is finished now. The next one I finished, I have here. Um, I will insert a picture as well, because I'm not wearing things today, because I'm too hot. Um, but this is the No Frills by Petite Knit. And I think I almost finished this last time. I can't remember, I think it was on an arm or something like that. I'm just moving my book out of the way, so I'm not looking at you. Um, and this is the No Frills by Petite Knit. I have sewn in my ends, but I haven't I don't always cut them off because when you block it every time and it, you know, it fidgets about, sometimes the ends sort of start shrinking. So I don't always cut off all the ends that you can't see. Um, but this is my No Frills by Petite Knit. Um, it's, yeah, I mean, so many people have knitted this pattern. You've probably seen hundreds and hundreds of these. Um, it's a really simple raglan, top down sweater. Um, I used, what did I use? Again, I used a woolly knit cone. So um, a four ply, 100% British wool cone um, in um, foxglove. And I held that double with a drops kid silk mohair in dark purple. So together, sort of like the, that's, I'm trying to find an accurate representation of the color. It probably is about that. It's really quite a vibrant purple. Um, so the, 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 the drops, um, the mohair and the the four the, the, the woolly knit four ply together make this really lovely colour. Uh, it's got lovely drape to it, as you can see, it's all wibbly wobbly. Um, what did I do? Let's look at my notes because it was so long ago I finished this that I can barely remember what I did. Um, so I only really made a couple of changes, so I didn't do any decreases on the sleeves apart from right at the end. So it's um I don't know, do you call it a balloon sleeve? I don't know. So I just knitted straight on the sleeves and then did a rapid decrease right before the cuff because um, I just like the way that that is comfortable on me. And I quite often wear jumpers, particularly this with mohair in it, over something else. So I don't like a tailored arm so much because I'm generally going to be wearing it over, over something else. Um, I knitted size four. Oh, and I knitted it a couple of, a couple of inches longer, I think, because I like things to come sort of just below my hips, so I knitted it a few inches longer. Um, I knitted it in the size four and I used 4.5 mil needles again on the main body and 3.75 on the ribbing. Um, I'm quite a tight knitter, so I generally have to go up a needle size from what's recommended in the pattern. I would knit it again, um, you know, it was an enjoyable knit. It is a lot of, 
it's just a lot of round and round once you get sort of past the raglan. Um, and there's nothing, if you know, if you want a nice simple round and round. I mean, there's loads of these simple raglan sweaters out there, isn't there? I think there's one by Jessie Maid. I think there's one by... Is there one by Andrea Maori? I don't know. There's lots of, there's lots of simple raglan. So this one was fine. I might knit it again. I might try a different pattern just to see if there's any differences. Um, but yeah, so I have worn it a couple of times. I wore it um, on my birthday. We went to the beach um, in the evening and had um, fish and chips on the beach, which was lovely and it got a bit cool. So I put this on um, and yeah, it's, it's really quite warm actually with the wool and the mohair. So um, it's, uh, yeah, really, really love that one. So that is my second finished object. Move that one out the way. Uh, next, I have put a picture up again. So, oh, I've got to reach over and get it. I haven't actually worn this one yet because this is so, so hot. So here it is on the hanger. Try and try and get this in shot, but I will put a picture up anyway. Um, so this is the, and I've got to look at the thing again. So this is the Classic Tea by Darling Jador. Um, and I will put all details um, in the description box, sort of below the video for you. Um, and it's a really nice tea tea. Um, I, the only modifications I made, I think I knitted, um, I think I knitted about another, the sleeves are really short and I think I knitted about another five rows. They're supposed to be even shorter than this. And I just had another sort of added on another sort of five rows. Um, the yarn is Drops Puna, P-U-N-A, Puna, Puna. Not quite sure how you say it. Um, and it is a 100% alpaca. Um, so this is really warm. And I was debating doing it long sleeved. I thought, what use am I going to have for... <sighs> a short sleeved hot t-shirt warm t-shirt um but i don't know i think even if i just if it gets hot in the house and sometimes you roll your sleeves up don't you so i think this would be really nice and i can just shove a cardigan on over the top if i get hot it's got really lovely drape to it that you can see lovely drape to that um i'm not sure what color it was i don't have any of the oh, i'm so bad at this um, I don't think I've got any of the ball bands. Let me have a look. I've got a... I might do. Oh, I might do. I do. Oh, look at this. So it drops... <laughs> it drops Puna, um, which is a... Like I said, it's a... Somewhere on here. 100% alpaca. <laughs> um, it's... Uh, 50 grams. It's 110 metres. Um, and this is the colour 04. So there we go, is the colour. I don't know if that's focusing at all. Um, but there we go. So yeah, drops tuna. Um, really, really nice yarn. I think I've got a picture of the, of the design somewhere. I've just got like one bag where I've just dumped all the stuff of the patterns, that, various patterns that I've made. I've just thrown everything in one bag. I don't know if there's a picture. I don't know if I printed off the picture. I might have saved my ink and not printed off the picture. But um, yeah, it's a really, really lovely tee. I knitted the fourth size again and I used four millimetre needles, uh, which gave me a really lovely fabric. It's not see-through at all. Um, yeah, you can see it's not see-through at all. Um, the ribbing is just, um, it's a twisted rib on the top and the bottom. Um, and yeah, it's a really lovely fit. It's quite size inclusive. There's nine different sizes. Um, there's a few, I don't know if there's short rows in this one or not, actually. I think there's a few, I think, there, I, I, sorry, I'm looking at this and realising you can't see my face at all. Um, I think there's some short rows in it. Let me turn it around. Is there short rows? Yeah. There is. Um, but it, and it fits really really nice um i'm going to try and get some um photos of me wearing it which will be on my instagram um, i probably won't get them done by the time this video goes up but it's such a hot it's really really cozy really warm i don't find it itchy at all it's really soft alpaca um i'd recommend the yarn it's really nice for, and i think i'm going to use that yarn again 
for um for a long sleeved jumper and then you could just make this um and put long sleeves on it um but again it's just a simple raglan top down but yeah the classic tee by darling j'adore so that's that one oh my goodness i can't reach i'm gonna have to just put that behind me there we go pop that there and that hanger's gonna sit there nicely like that okay so next finished object love it love should we do shall we do socks or a garment let's do some socks um so these are just some vanilla socks that i did for summer sock camp by it's hosted by Kay of the crazy sock lady so every year she does summer sock camp and you can just um it's split into um different cabins depending on how you knit your socks so dpn magic loop um, small circular and then miscellaneous for I think for any other method that you might use. Um, I knit all my socks on at the moment. I might try out some new methods, but at the moment I knit all my socks on um, 2.5 mil DPNs. I cast on 64 stitches, um, and then I just got a vanilla sock recipe that I use. Um, I do round about 20 rows of ribbing. Um, I like a heel flap and gusset. And then I do a wedge toe. Oh, do you know what? I've got sock blockers here. You can't. Come on, use your brain. Let's put one on here. So that's the sock. Um, this was a sock set by um, Snuggly Stars Yarn. Um, it didn't have a name. It was just a sock set, but it's really, really pretty. I love, um, look at all the speckles on there. And this actually, it complements it really well. It just picks out the... Um, yeah, it just picks out like the little bits of turquoise that you can see sort of dotted around. So, yeah, these are just for me. I just, I like having lots and lots of different socks in my, in my drawer. So that was the first pair of socks that I finished. I have three pairs of finished socks. That's the first pair. Uh, the next pair was this pair here. Uh, and this was also for Summer Sock Camp. It's my second pair in the DPN cabin. And let me pop these on a sock blocker. They're quite tall. Um, I think I must have really short sock blockers because it just hangs off the top. Um, so this was a sock set by, and I can't remember. Oh, Red Robin Yarns. Um, I won this in a giveaway. Um, and it's called, I think it was called the Vivian sock set so it's really really pretty um and for this one I just did a three by one 20 rows of three by one rib on the for the cuff then I just did a I think it's called a broken broken rib three by one broken rib so uh one round of three by one one round of knitting one round of three by one one round of knitting um all the way down and it gives this lovely sort of broken rib effect um heel flap and gusset and then just another wedge toe i i generally do 50 rounds in my leg so i mark off every 10 rounds with a stitch marker so i get it the same so yeah sort of about 20 rounds for the cuff 50 rounds for the leg heel and then i just knit until it fits my feet um so that's that is these socks i don't think um yeah got no other notes about that so that's another pair of socks i really like the um broken rib it was quite rhythmic um, and the rib gives it that extra bit of stretch so they're super comfy to wear because they've got that little extra bit of stretch on them so I like those and these are all 75 25 yarns so 75 superwash merino and 25 nylon and um, I want to start doing a bit more knitting um, with non superwash yarns but I've got quite a lot to use up so I'm just gonna use them up knit some socks but I find that the non-superwash yarns don't um, don't give me holes so quickly. So I get holes sort of where my toes are, um, and I find that these, not the non-superwash socks, tend to felt a bit more and create a thicker, thicker base under my feet, which doesn't hold quite as easily. So then I yes yesterday I finished these socks. So these are not for summer sock camp. These were my Christmas socks from last year that I never finished. So 
Um, because I'd already started them, I couldn't enter them for summer stock camp. Um, but, oh, these are super long. Um, these were um, a sock set called Muppets Christmas Carol. It's one of my favourite films of all time. Um, by Sarah at Stripey Cat Yarns. So this was one of her last year Christmas colourways. And it just screams Muppets Christmas Carol, doesn't it? It really, really does. Um, it's, it's just Kermit. I can just see Kermit and Miss Kermit and Miss Piggy, and Gonzo. Love it. Um, so again, I did. So I did a one by one rib on this one. I don't like one by one rib. I don't like how that looks very much. And um, I'm quite liking a three by one rib at the moment. So next time I do a pair of socks, I think it'll be a three by one. Um, and then I just knitted down until sort of I felt like it. I used the contrasting. Oh, I did a bit of the contrast colour at the top and then realised that the red was like the second colour in. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter. Uh, yeah, I used the contrast colour on the slip stitch heel. I made a slight mistake on this one. I haven't done it on the second sock. Um, but can you see this little red line on this one? Um, and I accidentally picked off my gusset stitches and did one round in the heel colour instead of going back to the, the main colour. But you can't really see it. Um, and then I just knitted again until it fitted and used the contrast on the toe. Um, I've actually got quite a, a bit left of this one. Um, considering they're quite long socks, I haven't weighed it, I'm sorry, but um, yeah, I reckon I've still got a good 35 grams left. So I could easily get a pair of shorties out of that and I've still got probably about 8 grams of the mini. So yeah, I think I could probably get a pair of shorties out of that or use it as a, like a, do some stripes up the leg, but then I could, a plain colour for the rest of the sock. I'd quite like to do that. Um, so these are my Christmas socks from last year that are now finished and will obviously become Christmas socks that I can wear this year. So that's quite exciting. Um, and now that I've finished these, I can start on my Christmas gift knitting. So I need to, I knit the, my girls' socks every year. Um, so we all have new ones for Christmas Day. Um, so I need to get started on that really because I've got uh, three pairs of socks to knit for them. So that's those ones finished. Um, that is all my sock whips. And I have one, one more. I have one more whip for you. Uh, no, finished objects. Those are my finished objects and I have one more finished object for you. Um, and this is, and again, I haven't um, had a photo taken with this one yet. So I quickly took a picture before this that I will insert here of what it looks like sort of hanging on the hanger. Um, and again, I have sewn in and done all my ends. I just haven't sort of cut them off yet. Um, and it has been blocked. But here it is. It's a bit creased because it's been sort of rolled in a drawer. Um, it is black, so I'm trying to show you in a better light, so better, yeah. Um, it's really, really hard to show it because it is black. So it doesn't come up very well. Uh, but this is the Ethereal Summer Tea by um, Mini Me Knit Designs. And again, someone else that's new to me. It's got this really lovely um, sort of eyelet feature down the raglan and also around the neck. It's got this really beautiful sort of eyelet feature around the neck. Um, it's quite deep. It's got like a nice... Um, I might need to block it again, actually. I've got quite a nice little... Can you see sort of where it comes across in like a little right angle at the top um, and that's on both sides but again it's curling a bit so I might need to block it again. It's got this really nice deep, quite a deep V um, and it's just a short tee. I did mine in black. It was a really easy pattern. It was a really lovely pattern to knit and I really like the eyelet feature. It just creates, it just gives it a bit of um, something more interesting, doesn't it? It's really, really nice that one. Um, and what have I written in my notes? So I knitted the fourth size again, because that tends to fit me. Um, it's got 10 sizes, so it's quite size inclusive. And um, it's got nice, nice cuffs. And I knitted this in um, King Cole Cotton Soft DK in black. Um, so it's cotton, um, it's, but it's a really, really soft cotton. You know, cotton can sometimes be quite stiff when you work with it, but this is, you know, it's got a lovely, as you can see, it's got a lovely drape. Um, so yeah, King Cole Cotton Soft, 
um, in the DK in black. Um, I knitted it about an inch longer. That's the only change I made. It's supposed to be quite cropped and it still is cropped, but I wanted it in for like an extra inch longer. So that's all I really did. Um, and I knitted mine on five millimeter needles um, and it was really quick. It was a really quick knit. I think I did it in two weeks and that's, you know, not being exclusive and watching lots of sport and reading lots of books. So um, yeah, I'd really recommend that pattern. It, it's worked um, obviously because of the V, where is it? Because of the V, you sort of work back and forth for a little while um, before you join it. Before you join it at the V. Um, but it is really, really nice. So I was really pleased with that one. And I think I'd make that again. Um, I might try, I'd really like to try the Frank and Olive silk. Um, I think that would be lovely um, with this pattern. Something a bit lighter, so the eyelets. When it's on my skin, because I'm quite pale, um, you can really see the eyelet detail, um, but yeah, something a bit paler maybe. But that's a nice classic piece that you can, because it's black, you can dress it up or dress it down, wear it with jeans, wear it with a dress, skirt, whatever. So really, really happy with that one. And that's my finished objects. So it might seem like a lot, like there's four garments and three pairs of socks, but, um, you know, a couple of those garments were, um, started like ages ago and it has been like three months so you know I'm not really that quick in it but uh, yeah I, I'm on like a garment roll at the moment I just want a handmade wardrobe I'd really like like a handmade capsule type wardrobe that I can just wear my own things and say look you know I made this and yeah feel really good about it so that's what my plan so works in progress Yes, yes. <laughs> did I talk about the yarn? I did. I'm having a moment. I've actually got, I think I've got the ball band here actually. While, we, while we're talking about the King Cole, oh, I've, got, I've got the ball band. So it was King Cole, cotton soft, colour 746 black and um, 100 grams has about 210 metres. So yeah, pretty good. Nice, that one. Really enjoyed that one. I picked it up at just my local yarn store, so I don't know how readily available it is, but it was a really nice cotton. Okay, works in progress. Oh, God, what have I got here? What's in this bag? I don't even know what's in here. Oh, that's another finished object. So, <laughs> I don't have it here. Um, I will put a picture in of my daughter wearing it. Um, but found another finished object. I made the, let find it. What is it called? Sorry. Oh, it's the Summer Secret Crop by Jessie Made Designs. And, oh, there's a letter about a school trip in here. Oh, I think I was supposed to return that. Um, yes, there we go. <laughs> the, um... Summer Secret Crop by Jessie Made Designs. Um, and I'm sure lots of you have heard about this. You know, it's quite a popular little summer crop top. Um, I decided to make it for my seven year old. Um, so I knitted the extra small, um, but I haven't got any notes on this because I think I started it, but no notes at all. Um, so I knitted this in the extra small, extra, extra small, the smallest size, because um, she's only seven. And I knitted it on, I don't think I've got the needles here either. I think I put it on my Ravelry page. Um, but I went down a needle size or I kept the needle size because I'm quite a tight knitter. I can't remember. But I didn't knit my usual needles, needle size that I would have knitted for an adult. I went down what I would normally knit to get gauge. Um, and I, yeah, I haven't got any other notes on that one. But the yarn I used was this really, really beautiful um, sort of pink with sort of like neck cotton neps in it. Can you see all the, I'll put it on the side, I don't know which side, no, this side's probably better, look, so I go in, you can see all like the cotton neps, and it's a really beautiful pink um, with like dark, dark pink speckles and the odd sort of yellow, or, oh, it's really bad, it's really blowing out, isn't it? Um, with the orange, sort of orange or yellow bits on there, so really pretty yarn. 
Um, I just hardly took me any time at all to knit. Um, and this was a, I got this in a D stash, so I don't think she does this base anymore, but this was Hedro Yarns. And it's a soft tweed four ply. Um, it was 84% superwash merino and 16% cotton acrylic nep. Um, and 100 grams is 425 meters. Um, and it was the colorway marshmallow. Um, and that was a really quick knit. Uh, and the other thing I changed, so yeah, I did the extra extra small, went down a needle size. Um, I knitted the body an extra inch longer because um, we didn't want it too cropped on her. Um, and the these straps are um, like an I cord strap, I think. Um, and I just did a crochet chain because I couldn't be bothered. So I got to the top and then I just basically just, once I got down to, I think it's four stitches you need, four or five stitches you need for the I cord. I just knitted them together a couple of times till I had one stitch. And then just got a crochet hook out. I think I got a 4.5 mil crochet hook, or four, four millimeter crochet hook, and just basically knitted a long chain and secured it to the back. Um, and then did the same on the other side. So it's just really thin straps. Um, and it's just a really cute little top for her to wear um, in summer or underneath jumpers in the winter. So that was another finished object I'd forgotten about. And this is in the bag that I made. So I'm not really gonna talk about it because it's really rubbish. Um, it, yeah, it's just a little one with little owls and a simple drawstring bag. So nothing fancy. So that was another finished object I completely forgot about. Okay, works in progress. I really only have two. Oh, I found something else as well. No, it's just the jumper from earlier. <laughs> but I put a picture in and I've talked about it. There's no need to show you the actual jumper because I did that on the last episode. Anyway, let's move on, let's move on. I have two works in progress. So I am knitting, no, I'm not. I am crocheting the um, a blanket with blue, the shan, oh. Shannon from Blue Fern Yarns has been doing a monthly club called the Pallet Club. Um, and every month she um, releases um, like an image on Instagram and then she dyes colours that will match that image. So the actual colours are a surprise. You don't know what you're getting. Um, but um, generally you've got an idea based on the image that she's put on. Um, and so every month, I've been doing this since January now. And I have shown this before because obviously I... Ah, it's all fallen on my lap. Um, I knit on this every month. Um, but I am I'm up to date, which is amazing me. I am totally up to date. So let me, just for example, this is February's one. So this is her ball band. This is Blue Fern Yarns. Um, and this was the February palettes. This is the one from the February palette set. Um, and it's a Platinum DK, which is 75% Superwash Merino and 20% Nylon. Um, and you get five 20 gram minis. Um, and oh, this is in my bag by, who is it by? Bertie and Poppet. Um, and this was given to me by my lovely friend Sharif, Molly and Bella. Um, this was, we did a little swap last year. So um, yeah, this is what she gave me. And it's a really lovely bag actually. It's got a beautiful sort of flowery lining and it's got all sorts of flasks and teacups and things on it. So yes. So since January, oh, I have been, um, I'm going to close my hook so I don't forget to tell you about it. Um, I have been knitting a blanket. It's just of my own design. Um, I'm doing crochet moss stitch um, and I'm just sort of making, I'll show you in a minute, but I'm just making panels with the colours um, and then eventually in, I'm going to put them all together and I haven't decided how yet, but once I've got all 12 colours, all 12 palette panels, for all 12 months I'll decide sort of how to compose them together um, and I'm knitting this on a 4.5 mil clover hook I like my clover hooks they're really squishy and ergonomic um, they work really well for me pop that back in there before I forget it so because it's been a while I'll run through the colors but um she's I really really like what Shannon's done with all these colors it's so beautiful so this is what I'm doing so this is what I mean by a panel I haven't seen in any ends yet. So I'm basically, each colour, I'm just starting off um, and knitting, you know, I can't remember how many I'm doing across, but it's all written down somewhere. Um, and then I'm just doing some rows down and some moss stitch. 
and then just knitting all five um, together in a panel. Um, so this was January's, so that's really, really pretty. And I'm putting, I've got a little stitch marker so I know which was the front and which is the bottom of each panel. So that's January's. Then this one was February's, really pretty February's, really lovely, beautiful sort of sagey green and grey and this this grey here. I think she's, I think Sharon's released this as a colour. It was Elephant, Elephant? I can't remember. I, but uh, I think Shannon's released this one as a natural colour, so that's lovely. So that was February's. March's, this one's my favourite. And um, really love these colours in March. That green and pink together looks so... I could just... I'm envisaging... Oh, something like a half and half wrap would be beautiful, wouldn't it? Like a green, that green and that pink in a half and half wrap. That would be so pretty. Um, so that was March's. Then... April's again really pretty I mean they're all really pretty um April's some lovely purples and blues and gray April where are we on May so May again was sort of greens purples and blues really pretty and you can go on our Instagram page and go scroll back through and, and see all the pictures that these sort of relate to um, this one was June's so this was mostly just blues so that's really really pretty June and then the two that I've knitted since I last podcast are July's and August's. Oh, which way around? See, this is where I should have. I think this is July's. Yes. So this is July's. So blue and a, like a brown and a mustard, like a turquoisey colour. So that was really pretty. That was June's. And then July's. Actually, this this is another one of my favourites. August's. I mean, it's August's. Um, so this lovely peach, blue, bright, quite a vibrant pink there, purple and another mustard. So, and I'm trying to make sure that when I put them in order, I'm not like, so this is, so for example, this is July's and this is August's. So I'm just making sure like the mustards aren't next to each other. Um, which way up does it go? Where's my stitch marker? Stitch marker. Okay, it's the other way around. So, yeah, so my blues aren't next to each other, my mustards aren't next to each other. I'm just trying to sort of space my colours out a bit. So, yeah. Um, and then eventually I will, like I said, I haven't decided how I'm going to do it yet. Um, but eventually I will sort of line them all up, make them into some sort of blanket shape. Um, and, yeah, make a blanket. Um, it might be, I, know, I, I might might release it as a pattern. We'll see. It might be rubbish. No one might be interested in the slightest. Um, but I won't know until it's finished. So, and it's, <laughs> it doesn't fit in the bag. I'm going to have to move it to a bigger bag because I'm having to squish it in. Um, and I'm using each colour up pretty much until I am doing a set number of rows. Uh, obviously, you know, when you buy um, yarn from a supplier, um, it's very rarely exactly 20 grams. It could be 21, it could be 19. Um, you know, it is, it's there or thereabouts, but sometimes there's like a gram out or a gram under here or there. So I'm managing to get enough rows so that every row is the same. Some colours are completely used up. I've got nothing left. Some I've got quite a lot, quite a lot left and some a little bit. Um, but I've just been making a magic knot ball with the leftover, with the leftovers. Um, and it won't be enough to do anything with after 12 months, but it'll just be, it'll go towards one day when I do like a random DK granny stripe blanket or something. So that'll go in there. Okay. <sighs> Nearly there. One more work in progress. This is my favourite. Um, so I have shown this, I think I showed this last time. It's my book. So this is... The Marble Mount by Hokey Locatelli. Um, really, really love this. Let's see if I can. I've got black and white pictures, but you kind of get the gist. So it's a really beautiful fitted top with um, a really pretty patterned yoke. Um, yeah, and it's sort of quite fitted. It's got like this round. It's got a just a fold rounded sort of. What's the word? Like a roll over neckline. Um, so it's really pretty. I really love this. And I am knitting this. 
I am knitting this on, what am I doing? I'm doing the fourth size again. You know, not to sort of like shock you into doing something, something different. Um, and I am knitting this with, oh, there's another thing to show you. Uh, linen quill in Pearl Soho. Oh my goodness, that skein is a mess. Well, the skein's come out completely. Um, but this is Linen Quill um, by Pearl Soho. I'm sure you've all heard of this. It's what everyone is doing the half and half wrap in. Um, and I did buy, for Christmas, I got three skeins of this, which is the chestnut red. And I got three skeins of an oatmeal colour. And I had intended to do a half and half, but this pattern came along and I just thought this would be perfect um, and it's 50% fine highland wool 35% alpaca and 15% linen and 100 grams is 439 yards so um, and this is the chestnut red really beautiful sort of orangey red brownie red color so really like that uh, I had 300 skeins so that should be more than enough I think to do this um, and as I said I'm knitting the fourth size so I have done there we go that's where I'm up to so I've done the yoke um I split for the sleeves and then I sort of just knitted until I'd finished the first skein of yarn so my the first skein of yarn knitted it looks really small but it's a fitted top so it's got negative you know it's uh, what, what's the ease on it um I don't know if it says let's have a look I don't know if it's negative ease or I'm trying to find the first page where she talks about it, but I... No, I can't find what ease it's meant to be knitted in. Um, but it's, it, you know, it's a fitted top, basically, so it's pretty much negative ease. So that's why it looks quite small, because it stretches nicely. Um, there's some short row shaping. It's got this lovely sort of, like I said, just a stocking stitch. Is that ribbed? Why is that stocking stitch? I don't know. It's just folded over. <laughs> really should pay more attention. Uh, this beautiful pattern that goes sort of all the way around the front and on the back and also down the arms. Um, and then it sort of stops. And then, yeah, so I knitted to the end of the first ball um, and then I decided to go back and do the arms just to make sure I had enough. So I have knitted the first arm um, with the sleeves. got quite a nice long cuff. Um, I have tried it on and I popped a picture I'll put, I'll put a picture as well, but I put, 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 uh, put a picture on my Instagram the other day. So I'll put a picture up here as well. Um, but it's really, really beautiful. Um, and I've just picked up for the second sleeve. Um, I haven't made any alterations so far. I'm knitting it to pattern. Um, and I'm using, what size needles am I using? 3.5 mil needles. And it's a four ply yarn. So it's quite a nice gauge. And it, it's, um, it's a really lovely fit. So super happy with that can't wait for this to be finished i really want to wear that this winter with a nice pair of skinny jeans um and it's yeah really really beautiful yarn so super happy with that um right just need to take a break a minute i can hear something going off in the other room i'll be back in a second okay, i'm back um that took a bit longer to sort out to sort out than i thought it would um so what was i talking about the marble mount yes really really love that pattern um, and I just think the linen quill adds this sort of, um, the, the linen in it adds like an extra sort of dimension or texture to the yarn. So super excited to get that one finished. <sighs> okay, so that is all my finished objects and works in progress. Um, yeah, as you can see, only two whips at the moment. So I am planning to cast on some socks soon. So I need to get the girls' Christmas socks started. So I'm going to have a rummage through all my Christmas yarns. But this year I really wanted to make them DK socks. Um, big squishy sort of wintry socks just to wear around the house. Because um, I've got quite a few and I love them. So I'm going to try and see if I can... Any of my Christmas yarn can sort of be doubled up. If it's sort of A lot of it's self-striping. So it might not work. Um, if I can double it up or maybe I'll just match it with um, match it with a mohair and make some thick socks. So I'm just going to go through all my sort of sock, Christmas sock yarn, see what I've got and hopefully make some, um, start on some Christmas socks for the girls. I'm so creased. I'm sorry, I look like a slob today. Um, 
Then I also want to knit myself a Christmas jumper. Um, I think I said this back in January, but I'll put a picture here. It's the Fallow. Can't remember who it's by because I'm just saying this off the top of my head. Um, but I really want to knit this one. Um, I'm thinking like a red tweed, a nice white reindeer. Super traditional red and white for Christmas. Um, but I'd like to knit that one for myself. I really want to knit, um, what else is on my radar? Um, I want to knit the, oh, what's it called? The Cargill sweater by Crea Bayer, so Rebecca at the Crea Bayer. It's her first pattern and it looks incredible. It's a really beautiful textured stitch, um, full on, full textured sweater. So body, arms, the whole thing is in this textured stitch. I'll pop a picture up here again. Um, and I've got some beautiful sort of lilac, no, it's not really lilac. What is it? It's like a, hmm, a pale violet. It's not got the blue tones. It's, got, it's a warm toned, light to purple um, from Woolly Knit. Um, and I think it would look lovely in that. So, uh, but that pattern's not released yet. Um, so when that pattern's released, I'm hoping to jump on the bandwagon and knit it. I think she's um, gonna sell quite a few of that pattern. It looks gorgeous. Um, I really like the idea of the Ali sweater by S Knits, I think. Um, again, I'll put a picture up here, but I'm not, I haven't done a huge amount of colour work and I'm not sure that, I think the German short rows are, you, you, do, are, you do that within the colour work. So I might need to do a bit more, maybe another couple of colour work sweaters before I feel comfortable doing this one, I'm not sure. I think about it um, but I do really like the design of it so that's on my radar um, I want to put some other Christmas knits plans that I can't talk about on here because people might not be watching um, some other Christmas knits planned uh, and yeah so you know it's Christmas very soon isn't it and you know you need to get things done I don't want to be sort of knitting right up until the 24th of December um, and I've got an advent calendar coming this year so I want to be able to do that in December so I'd like to get my Christmas knits all done by the end of November. Um, but I'll talk more about the advent near Christmas because, you know, it is still it is still August, even though us knitters plan way in advance for Christmas. So that is all the knitting talk. I have a couple of acquisitions, not many. I've been quite good. Most of the acquisitions I've sort of put straight into projects. So like the Blue Fern Yarns palette set um, and... The, you know what else yeah the cotton for the for the summer tea um they were all just bought and then put straight into what i bought them specifically for the project so that's good but i do have quite a bit of stash i want to use up so that's why i'm sort of doing a lot of socks lately so i have um the other day we went to a shop that i've been following a while on instagram but just hadn't had the chance to pop into and it's the hive at pellant which is near Lou in cornwall um, and she's got a lovely selection of yarn in there. I didn't realise how much she had. Um, and I just picked up two, two skeins, um, DK skeins, hopefully for doing socks. And this is West Yorkshire Spinners, um, the Croft um, Shetland Tweed in 100% Shetland Islands wool. Um, and it's this really beautiful pink soft tweed. Can you put it in front of my face and it might sort of focus a bit better. Um, and this is a DK, um, it's 225 metres to 100 grams. Does it have a colourway? Mayland 813 maybe? I don't think that's focusing, let me... Oh, I don't know, things like that seem to be focusing very well today. Mayland um, 813, um, but it's it's got sort of pinks and purples really so it's this beautiful tweed so I thought that would make some nice um socks because again it's 100% wool so for me I'd make really nice socks um and then I picked up this opal really really pretty look um pinks and turquoises and purples um and this is an eight ply but it's a DK yarn but eight ply and it's 150 grams uh, so I should get at least two pairs out of this um, and it's 75% virgin wool and 25% polyamide. So it's still not, it's not super wash, but there is some nylon in it or polyamide in it um, to give it a bit of strength. And that's sort of what it's going to knit up like. 
focus, focus, focus. No, I have a rubbish, I, I film on my iPhone um, and it just doesn't seem to want to focus on anything. You can't really see that, but you get the gist. Um, so I should be able to get a couple of pairs of socks out of that one, which would be nice. Really, really pretty. Um, and then it was my birthday at the end of July and I bought myself from my husband <laughs> um, a set of chow goon needles. Um, and these are the shorties, um, but the large sizes. So there's a little pouch that sort of comes inside. Um, and yeah, so these are, so you get the, you get the, what are they, two inch and the three inch ones. And it goes from a 3.5 mil to a five mil. <clears throat> Um, and I find these particularly like knitting sleeves. Um, yeah, they've just like all the garments there, the sleeves have been knitted in these. Uh, and I quite like to do, you know, like the Addy, I think it's Addy, where they've got like one long and one short. So on the sleeves I'm knitting at the moment on the marble mount, I've got like the three inch on one end and the two inch on the other. So these are super useful. Um, and it comes with three it's really like a little cute little pouch it comes with three different lengths um so a five inch a six inch six inch and an eight inch so that's 13 centimeters 15 centimeters and 20 centimeter um cables um and then it just comes with a little sort of like some ends and stitch markers and stuff like that so that was a really good christmas present i now need to get the thinner version so I can do some socks with these and then I need to get the full length so I can do you know yeah everything basically uh, but really happy with my chow goos it's the first ones I've, I've sort of really had and used and I love them and then <clears throat> oh I had a little play with um so two years ago I got like a little acid dye set from my mum and dad just to have a play with I'm not interested in you know dying on on a large scale um, but definitely just for myself sometimes it's quite nice to just play around with colour I enjoy that um, so I had a couple of blank skeins uh, undyed skeins I should say that I wanted to sort of have a play with in the holidays while my kids were away um, so first up I have done this one here which is really sort of just pinks purples splashes of blue a bit of like little red or little spot of orange sort of creeping in but happy with that so these are just going to be like socks and things like that but it's quite nice to say you dyed it yourself isn't it so really pleased with that one it's come up really well it's got like a nice dark blue up there and yeah like that um and then this one here again really pretty so it's like a pale green with pink splodges in it it's got like some brighter yellow sections and darker pink sections and a few speckles on the end so yeah super happy with that one so there were those two that I'm just gonna sort of play around with <clears throat> and I think I see look I've written down here no acquisitions but obviously since then I went to that shop and bought those two skeins of yarn uh, yeah that's all my notes <clears throat> bonus so <laughs> um yeah, just a bit of life chat now. Um, if you're still interested or still here, um, if you're going to whiz off, then thank you so much for watching. Um, it would be lovely if you could um, subscribe to the channel. Um, <clears throat> I'm finding it really hard to grow to grow my channel. So I know obviously I don't podcast very often, so that's largely my fault. Um, but it would be nice if, if um, you sort of liked and subscribed. That would be great for me. And then, you know, I can... You know, it might motivate me to do a few more. I don't know. Um, so life chat, yes. <clears throat> so I was think I was telling you at the beginning that yesterday me and my husband went out for the day, so I was referring to my hair. Um, so <clears throat> yeah, I got up in the morning, straightened my hair, put on a pretty dress. We planned a whole day out. Um, the kids were going to his parents for the day and overnight. So we decided we'd book the train to Totnes. Um, <clears throat> and then we were going to get the ferry to Dartmouth from Totnes and then get the ferry back to Totnes and then we booked a restaurant in Totnes and then got the train home in the evening. 
Um, so we booked all that on a lovely sunny day because the best plans are made on sunny days, um, except when you wake up and it's raining. Uh, but, you know, we'd already pre-booked everything and it wasn't, I'm not going to say it wasn't horrendous rain. It wasn't, it was drizzly rain, but it went on for hours. <laughs> so um, I'd put on a dress. I didn't want to have a coat. It was still really warm outside, so I didn't want to take a coat with me. So I put on a dress, but it's a viscose dress, so I knew it would dry really quickly in the rain. Um, had a little leather jacket and an umbrella and then just like a handbag. Um, so that was fine. We got wet walking to the station. Um, we got wet walking from the station to the ferry. <laughs> when we got to the ferry, there was quite a large queue already. And so it's um, it's one of those ferries. It's got an undercover downstairs and then open top. So we went upstairs, got a wet bottom and sat down in the open top, um, had my umbrella up. We sort of sat at the back of the boat, sort of curled up, huddled under this umbrella. Um, but it did ease, it did ease off a little bit and there were, there were dry spells. Um, but I can highly recommend the ferry from Totnes to Dartmouth or Dartmouth to Totnes if you only want to do one way. Um, it was stunning. Um, it's an hour and a half trip. So it's a really good length of time. Um, and the guides do like a, they do like a guided talk sort of as you're going along. Um, we, so you start, we started at Totnes <clears throat> and as you go out, it quickly becomes sort of like just fields and nature. Um, and we saw egrets and cormorants and herons and buzzards. Uh, we even saw quite a few seals sort of like just sleeping on the side of the bank, which was lovely. Um, it takes you up through the Sharpham Winery Estate, which is a, a winery down here in Devon. And then you go through lots of little villages and hamlets. Uh, and then you also end up, you go up past um, uh, the famous Greenaway Estate, which was Agatha Christie's home on the Dart. So you can see that sort of up on the, up in the trees. Uh, and then sort of as you approach Dartmouth, um, on one side, so you're sort of coming coming along the river, you've got Dartmouth is on this side, and on this side is Kingsweir. Um, and Kingsweir has a steam railway that runs from Kingsweir to Pennington. And so the steam train was going along there, so that was really sort of like atmospheric, sort of seeing the steam train go up the side of the valley. Um, and then it was the regatta is on at Dartmouth this week. So when we got off at Dartmouth, it was really busy. There was a food market, the few sort of boats racing up and down. Um, it was raining, but I'd given up on my umbrella at this point. There were just too many people, so we just got wet, which is why my hair ended up like a big ball of mess. Um, and we just walked around Dartmouth for the day. Well, for a couple of hours we had in Dartmouth, and we got back on the ferry. Um, it was drizzly when we got on, but it was dry the whole way back, and the sun came out. So again, we saw lots more seals and birds, um, and the same sort of, you know, the same scenery on the way back, but it was sunny, so it was really nice. Um, and then when we got back, we just had a walk up through Totnes, it's quite an eclectic high street, um, so many different types of shops. So it's really interesting to have a walk up through. Um, and then we just went for a few drinks and had a dinner. So had a dinner, had dinner. Uh, and that was really nice. Uh, we haven't been away this summer. Um, just, you know, we just haven't got around to doing it. Um, but my husband took the kids camping for um, a couple of weekends. So I had some time to myself, which was really nice. Um, it was really what's the word, cathartic, cathartic, it's not lethargic, cathartic, the opposite, where it, it was just really cleansing and peaceful, and I just needed that time to just shut off from everything that was going on, so I planned to podcast then, because he went away for, one of the camps he went away for four, four nights, so like I had nearly five days to myself, but I just, I just needed that time to switch off from everything, every pressure in my life that you know that's going on it just I just switched it all off totally focused on me um I did I did do knitting I did lots of reading um we've had watched a lot of sport on the television we've had the, the Commonwealth Games and the European Championships um I painted some furniture that I hadn't done for a while had a bit of a sort out it's just it was very very relaxing it was really nice I didn't see anybody for five days and that's such a good feeling. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, I work with a lot of people. I work in HR, so, you know, you see people all the time. I've always got my kids here. We're always going out. We're always doing stuff. And um, when I said, you know, I was telling people, oh, my husband's taking the kids away. Oh, what are you going to do? You're going to do this. You're going to go out here and go out. I said, no, 
I'm not, I just, I really needed that time to totally unwind, um, not engage in conversation, just, yeah, just be with myself. <laughs> uh, and it was lovely. Um, so I am now counting down the days to next summer when he takes them away again. I'm not, I promise. I will value my year. I do like to enjoy my days, but um, I also enjoy him going camping with the kids every summer. And that's been it really, it's been really quiet. Um, we go back to work on the, as so I work in a school and go back to work on the 5th of September, so I haven't got long left. Um, oh, today is, today is Tuesday? Tuesday the 23rd of August. It gets like that in the summer. I totally forget the days and the months because, you know, I don't care. <laughs> I'm just going on through. Um, but we're back in about just over, just under two weeks. So we go back on the 5th of September, back to work. Well, I have got to do a couple of days before then just to catch up on some stuff that I haven't done yet. But um, it's, yeah, it's been a nice chilled summer. So next year, I think it's going to be a bit busier for us um, next summer. So this year, it was nice to just sort of step back and uh, and do something quiet. Um, let me know what you've been up to this summer uh, or winter if you're down south in Australia or in the, in down there. Um, yeah, let me know what you've been up to. Have you been enjoying the heat or do you prefer the autumn winter like me? Um, yeah, I think that's it. So thank you for watching if you've made it this far. Um, it's been nice to have a catch up. I will try and do, try and do it more frequently. <laughs> um, yeah, luckily I'm, I'm child free today again. So, um, my parents have taken the kids out today and my husband's decided to go sea swimming. So I had some time to do this, so thought I'd get it done. But yeah, lovely to catch up um, and hopefully see you again soon. Bye.